Hi, welcome to the Canadian Preppers Network YouTube channel. Today, I'm bringing you into my kitchen, show you a few things that I do, prepare uh, for winter, get everything sorted out for the pantry. We'll be right back. Alright, so today we're going to take a look right in my kitchen, see a few things that I'm doing uh, for food preservation. Now, first of all, if we look over at the stove there, turn the camera a bit just like that, you'll see a big pot of peppers. These are local field peppers. We've got green, yellow, orange, red. There's uh, a few red onions chopped up into there and a couple of tomatoes from the garden uh, on top. That pot's gonna have to simmer down a little bit. We're gonna be putting it all into those jars and pressure canning it. On top of that, we have some stuff in the dehydrator. You can't see the dehydrator now because the camera's sitting right on top of the dehydrator, but here's the lid for it. What we did yesterday was we dehydrated some green and yellow beans that came out of the garden. The reason I'm dehydrating them is my pantry is getting full with jars. I've got quite a few jars of, of green and yellow beans right now. So it's not a huge issue to be jarring them up and canning them. Uh, my freezers are full. They're chock that just there's not much left going to go in the freezers this year. So I'm down to dehydrating stuff, uh, especially like green and yellow beans. Let's try and find a, a tray with both of them on there. Here's what they look like all dehydrated. So we're going to get these out because I have other stuff to get in there. I'm running out of room in this kitchen lately. So we're just going to lift the mesh like that into a bowl. There we go. Done. This one can go back into the dehydrator. I just dropped one, but the dogs will get that. Nothing sticks to these, it's great. Just cut them up as you normally would. Inch, inch and a half pieces. However you would normally store these into the dehydrator. I think on 125 or 135, what is it? Vegetables, 125. Eh, you know what, it takes the afternoon. Six, eight hours maybe. These are going to be stored in a mason jar. I wish I could stop dropping a few every time I empty a tray. And what did we have? We had, I think, eight out of the nine trays this time. Uh, they looked a lot fuller than this when they went in. That's them dehydrated, but these trays were pretty much uh, full up as much as I could without having stuff touch each other. So we're going to get these out of here. I just usually lift the mesh right off of the tray like that into a nice big bowl, fold it up, give it a shake. Off everything comes. It's great. I use the uh, Excalibur dehydrator. The Nesco's, I've heard good things about. You can try the Nesco's if you want. Uh, they're expandable, whereas the Excalibur's are not. Oh, here's a nice one to show you. Just to show you how full I can get them. There we go. Let's get these in. I took a picture yesterday of how many green and yellow beans went into this. Uh, let's pop that on the screen right now. Okay, so as you can see, it was a two liter ice cream container uh, f over full uh, that I started out with. Just grab a mason jar here off camera. Here we go. 
to make life easier. Grab our canning funnel. This is a one liter jar. Remember I started with an over full basket of two liters. And this is why I love dehydrating, especially when you're short on space like I am right now. Two liters went down into not even a half a liter. There's maybe a third of a liter there. Pretty impressive, eh? Keep in mind, if I need the two liter container to make a dinner for four, we like our vegetables, so lots of vegetables, that I'm going to rehydrate a little less than half a jar at a time. And uh, as the green and yellow beans keep coming in, we're going to keep doing this. Uh, just an alternative to the canning saves a lot of space a lot of space let's put this off to the side let's put that right there oh yeah we have a few uh, in another jar that we had done before so let's just put everything in and there I got about a half a jar now already we'll be expanding on that as things come in the garden didn't do all that great on certain things this year so what we're doing is we are buying produce now is the time to buy it you're buying local uh, we're buying everything local as we can uh, as we have to supplement what we did in our uh, garden this year now we're good to go with the dehydrator I can get rid of this bowl let's put it here for now and the next thing that's got to go in there, you'll know, pardon me that I go off of camera every once in a while. My kitchen is not huge and I have stuff everywhere. Here's a, a huge Ziploc baggie of oregano. That's going to be the next thing that's going to go into the dehydrator. Eh, let's get it in there now. I'll show you a tray or two uh, once I get it going. So. Here's a tray that I've set up with the oregano. I tend to leave it on the stems. I'm gonna grind these uh, in a manual grinder when I'm done and put them into jars. So I don't mind leaving them uh, on the stem. The stem goes in there too. It all gets ground up anyway. Uh, you won't really get any chunks and stuff. Let's take a piece off, there's a bit much on there. Notice how it's all spaced out so that nothing's really touching each other as much as possible and into the dehydrator this goes. The problem I find with herbs like this which reminds me to get rid of a tray is that you can't fill the dehydrator. The reason being is because there's not enough space in, in the Excaliburs uh, to put one rate on top of the other so you kind of have to alternate this first tray is going in on slot number two and I'll have to take out a second tray to get those in so I'll only get uh, two four six eight you know four maybe five if I'm lucky trays in there tray number one tray number three are out so on to tray number four. See you in a bit. All right, here we go. The Excalibur it is on and running. Uh, I was able to fit five trays in there. Uh, one of the trays I did, uh, it laid pretty flat, so I was able to get one right on top of it, but that's it. The extra four trays sitting up there. This puppy's running at 95 Celsius, I think, no, 95 Fahrenheit uh, for herbs. And I didn't get the whole bag of oregano in there. I'm going to have to do another run with a bit more. And if that wasn't enough, there's a whole bag of basil that's going in right after that. We have more produce coming in. We're going to have celery soon. We're going to have peppers from our garden. Uh, all sorts of stuff that's going to have to be dehydrated. Uh, leeks, potatoes, you name it. This puppy's going to get a workout this fall, let me tell you. I've used it before, on and off. This year, I'm really putting it to the test because we have so much in the freezers already and in jars already that I'm looking at other options. I really wish I had a harvest right, a home freeze dryer. 
I don't. It's not in the budget right now. Maybe someday soon. Over to the stove. We're getting ready to do some canning here. We'll take a look at those peppers. These are locally grown field peppers. They're all different colors. We have orange, yellow, red, green in there. We have uh, three red onions. Uh, a couple of tomatoes that did come from the garden. And to top it all off, we put in some seasonings that we like. Uh, onion powder, there's some paprika in there, there's some pepper in there, a few different things, some oregano, uh, whatever. This is great to open up if you want to do like a sausage pepper dinner. Uh, just grab a jar of these, uh, your, your sausages, uh, pour it all over some rice, and it's fantastic. To go along with that, in the back we have a kettle full of water. I like to keep a kettle of hot water uh, whenever I can. Sometimes you need to top off a jar with some uh, some liquid that you, you don't have enough from your produce. So I always keep a, a kettle back there of, uh, of hot water. Of course the Presto canner is out, ready to go, almost. Just got to get that with some water in it and start filling it. And we have a small pot with our lids. We're going to turn those on to medium, or minimum right now, just minimum, very, very lowest. Uh, these just need to warm up, kind of simmer a little bit. They don't need to boil. Over here we've got what I think we're going to use is eight jars. So these are one liter jars. Mixed brands. There's some Golden Harvest there. There's some Ball there. There's some Bernard in there. There's uh, Consumers Mason, even. I get jars wherever I can find them. Garage sales are great for that. Uh, so for right now, the peppers uh, are still kind of cooking down a little bit. We want to get them a bit hotter than that. And uh, we'll come back when I'm ready to start filling some jars. Alright, so we've got our peppers ready in this pot. They've simmered down really nicely. Uh, and we've got everything else that we need uh, at hand. I've moved my canner out of the way right now. Uh, this isn't that I would normally fix it up and, and fill the jars, uh, but because of the cavern, I'm trying to show everybody this is the way we're going to do it this time. We have a small pot with our lids simmered in them, nice and warm. We've got a kettle of uh, pre boiled water ready to go in case I need to add some water. Slotted spoon, ladle, and if you notice, I've changed my uh, my towel here because the towel that was here was was damp. It had gotten cold and cold and damp and hot. Do not mix. I don't want to be busting any jars when I fill them. To preheat my washed jars, I've just filled them with hot tap water and then filled the sink around them with hot tap water. We can just take them out, empty them up, and away we can go. Let's get our canning funnel here. Let's get our jars out. Let's empty them out. They're nice and warm. They're not scalding hot by any means. They're nice and warm. Uh, I find just the warmth of hot tap water will do just fine. Uh, I rarely have anything crack on me. Uh, actually, I've never had any of them crack on me while I'm filling them. I've had a couple cracks in the canner, mostly because they were too hot to handle, and instead of using a jar lifter like a smart person, I thought I would tough it out and hand lift them in, and it didn't work out. I ended up dropping uh, a hot jar into the bottom of the canner one time, and it, it broke there. Just dry off my hands. Draining the sink. Sorry, that wasn't me blowing kisses at anybody. That was my sink draining. So we're going to start with the slotted spoon to get our peppers out. Without too much liquid. Some of it's going to get in there anyway. That's just the way it is. Uh, but we'll be topping it off with the same liquid anyway. But wait till you see what that liquid looks like. You're going to know now why I'm keeping it and why it's going to be used later as a cooking liquid. Uh, especially if I put rice or something in here. It's just awesome colored. Part of it is the tomatoes, part of it is the peppers, part of it is the paprika that I put in there. 
should just jam this down, pack it in, Get some headspace in there. Normally you'd want about an inch of headspace on this in your jar. I'm going to pack the peppers a little lower than that because I'm going to add water up to the proper level. We can just go one at a time filling these puppies up. More than likely I'll speed up the camera when I edit this video. This is kind of boring. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get my eight jars out of this. Now I mentioned earlier what we like to do is, is mix in some of our homemade sausages with this. We'll like parboil the sausages, uh, cut them up into pieces, uh, pan fry them up, add the peppers and the juice and some rice and eat it like that. It makes an awesome meal. It's nice and quick when uh, things are pre-filled like this. You may be wondering why I'm not adding the sausage right now. After all, I'm pressure canning this because it's a low acid food. And the reason for that is because I don't want to set up meals like that. I would much rather set it all up as ingredients to use. That way, uh, if we're sick of the sausage and peppers and rice, I can always grab one of these jars uh, cook it down with some chopped uh, cabbage, maybe put in some ground pork or beef. You know, do different things like that. Maybe some, maybe some bacon. Oh, bacon cabbage in this would be great. That would be awesome. But the reason I'm doing it like this is it gives me more options. Also, I would have to open two cans anyway. Uh, two jars. Because four sausages to make a meal for a family of four is going to be half of this jar anyway so if I wanted to feed a family of four I would only get half a meal into one of these jars so I'm gonna to have to open up two jars anyways for a meal so why not oh, I lost the pepper son of a gun sneaky little bugger the dogs will get that later no, I'd rather I'd rather keep my options open uh, so that we don't get you know fed up of eating the same thing uh, all the time. Like every time we have peppers, it's always done the same way. Yeah, well, this way I don't have to. I, I'm leaving myself options. I can mix the different meats in, uh, different starches in. I'm not cleaning anything yet because I am nowhere near done this process. This is just the peppers. We're going to be putting the liquid in to fill once I'm done. You see I'm kind of using the slotted spoon to drain off most of the liquid. Like I said, if some gets in, it's going to get in there later anyway. Don't worry about it. But I find this helps me pack in the right amount of peppers that ought to do it. Pack that down a bit like that. Jar number five. You know what I think I'm going to change the way I do this. I usually do it on the stove one at a time and I'm wandering back and forth with empty jars and full jars and stuff to the counter. Makes a bit of a mess on the stove. And I've never done it this fast before. This is great. I think uh, there, YouTube, YouTubing has taught me a lesson on how to fill my jars. This is much easier this way. And the reason I have to go back and forth is because usually my canner is sitting right here on this element to heat up. That's the only element it fits on because of the range hood. Uh, if I tried to put it on the back, it will fit under there, but I would not be able to get jars in and out of it without moving it. So, I always use the front one. And I only get seven jars out of this. Whatever. Let's see what we get. What we get is what we get. For those of you wondering, there were 32 
colored peppers in this batch. No, I'm going to get eight. 32 colored peppers chopped up into inch and a half ish pieces or whatever. Of course, cord, not peeled, not anything like that. Last jar. Uh, three medium sized red onions. Two medium sized, medium to large sized tomatoes. No, I didn't grow all of this. Uh, I am growing red onions this year. They haven't come out of the ground yet. They're still growing. Uh, I did grow peppers, but I'm not getting a whole lot yet. It just seems like everything this year was just so darn late. I am going to get my eight jars easily on this. I have to figure out a way to scoop everything out. That's always annoying. I'm still going with peppers and tomatoes. So yeah, there was 32 uh, peppers, three red onions, two tomatoes, plus the seasoning, but the seasoning doesn't take that much of this. Let's pack that down see where we are. Get down, get down. There we go. Now we're just taking what's left over here and topping off each jar as we go along. Pretty boring for a YouTube video, I know, but that's just the way prepping is. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys out there have ever been approached by some of these prepper TV shows. Where somebody contacts you, oh, we're doing uh, this or that about preppers. Doomsday preppers used to do it all the time. They'd call people. Yeah, they called me too. Uh, there was a local production company from here in Quebec wanted to do something. And when I started explaining to them some of the things that I could have showed them, like this, uh, they, they really lost interest real fast because... This is not exactly what we'd call TV material. And as much as we'd like to think that the prepping lifestyle is, is exciting and everyone talks about the guns and the end of the world and the this and the that, uh, this is mostly what it is, people. It's not all that exciting. Needless to say, none of those production companies ever wanted to film me filling jars or, or planting seeds or, or doing other stuff, setting up first aid kits or, or any of the other stuff that I was willing to show on television. It was just too boring for them. So, none of them ever filmed me. And now you know why. Prepper life is a boring life. We're getting almost everything out of there. You can see, actually, this one here. You can see how much these peppers are still warm. They're still kind of cooking themselves, and they're shrinking quite a bit already. We can see the jars come out at the end. And you'll see that these are maybe, they look to be about half full. I think I got everything out now. Get rid of the slotted spoon. Now we're going to move on to the spatula and we're going to bring up the liquid level up to about here, the bottom of the. Uh, just where the screw band starts. There's a little lip here. That's, that's your one inch spot on most jars, but check out the color of this broth as it goes in. Man, is that going to be awesome when we're cooking with it. That's why I keep it to cook with. Fill, 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 fill. We're going to get that up to that line. Right about there. And then we're going to get the air bubbles out. Those nasty air bubbles out. This plastic thing that they sell in the kit is awesome for that. 
there we go. The level's a little bit lower than that ridge spot. That's fine. Uh, it'll help keep this from blowing out. And yeah, there's a bit of oil in peppers. That's where vegetable oil, you know, vegetables have oil in it. That's why we call it vegetable oil. Uh, so if it's a little bit lower, it'll help keep that oil from blowing out of the jar, which it will anyway, you'll know, we'll see. Uh, but it'll, it'll help reduce that if you keep your, your headspace a little lower. As I'm going on along, putting my filled ones over there. This one's really shrunk up already. It's going to look really half full once it's processed. That's actually another thing you really do have to consider when you're home canning. Oops. Is the fact that shrink, things do shrink down. And uh, you gotta pack a little bit more than you thought maybe you would have to at the beginning. Looks a lot, there's a lot less food once it's canned. We're getting there, folks. Hang on with me. As I'm scooping out this broth, some of the vegetables that I missed before with the slotted spoon are coming along with it. read the books they tell you to scrape the sides scrape the sides scrape the sides don't forget to jab this thing down into the middle too there's air bubbles hiding in there there's air bubbles hiding everywhere. go number seven look at that this is going to be like a perfect eight jars I'll have to write that down for next year so that I remember 32 peppers, 3 red onions, 2 tomatoes, for 8 1 liter jars. Last one coming up. This is pretty much as perfect as I could get it. And yeah, some of the liquid did come from water that I added. Uh, as this was simmering down, a lot of liquid came out of those peppers and the onions. There's a lot of liquid in there, naturally. Uh, but once it had started to settle, if you notice, I started first, this pot was rounded at the top. Once it got down to maybe an inch uh, above the rim, I added hot water into it, just enough to bring it to cover. I think we're done with that and that and that's all right because the water really did turn into the broth wipe the lid set it aside wipe the rim Make sure there's nothing on there if food is on this this lip when you put the lid on you won't get a good seal and trust me, six months later, when you go to pull that jar, it's going to be gross. Uh, anybody that's canned has probably had the occasional seal failure. What the food turns into hiding in your pantry 
after a seal failure is not a pretty sight. It will happen. Don't get discouraged if it does. Totally natural. All right, so this pot can now go into the sink with all my stuff in it. We'll wash that out later. We need a rag to wipe up all the juice that's spilled here. A little bit messy. Try to keep the stove clean. I washed it. Joey! Found the pepper I dropped. There he goes. He's a happy boy. Let's get our canner into view here. Onto the front. Put our lid to the side. And we need some water in here. About two liters. Should put a bit more in. So that was probably about a liter of water. As you can see, I go for accurate measurements. So let's get another liter or so of water in there. I don't know how much a liter is. Take a mason jar. It's a liter. There we go. That can be washed. Handy dandy vinegar because chances are these things are going to blow out your seals a little bit. The vinegar in the water will help keep your, the inside of your canner clean. It will also help in cleaning off the jars. There we go. Magnet wand. Let's get these lids on. Here's a neat thing about lids. I was watching a canning video on YouTube the other day. And the person doing the video dropped one of the lids as they were putting it on. And they said that it had to go back into the water that she had it in, like this pot of this pot of water, like that, to re-sterilize. Nobody's sterilizing anything in simmering water. That's not boiling, that's not anything, that's not doing nothing for sterilization. Sterilization is happening from putting them in here. That's warm water. These are warm jars. Nothing is hot, nothing is cold. Everything at the same temperature. Makes it easy to handle. I learned that lesson. Remember, I told you, hot jar in there. You're going to drop it. And nothing is going to crack and break on you. I'm in there going on the outside. Yes, I'm using funky lids because this is what I have hanging around. These screw bands are from some fancy... 250 mil jam jars that I had bought at a farm sale once. I'm only going to get seven jars. <laughs> In my canner. How about that, eh? That sucks. Uh, we're going to keep two out then for the second run. Now, these things, I don't care to use them on, the, on these jars. They're not going to stay on this. Uh, someone was just complaining to me last weekend about all their screw-on lids being rusty these screw-on lids they got rusty and the reason is, is if you leave these on after you've canned moisture gets trapped inside there and they will start to rust and after a couple of years you just want to use them because they, they look horrible like that the lid is what makes the seal the little snap lid once these jars have popped the, the lid is popped down the jar is cooled enough leave it out 24 hours you can take this screw band right off and set it aside your seal will be held it won't be an issue so if you hate those rusty screw bands take them off 
We're going to crank up the stove to high. We're going to move the, you know what, we're going to do three on the second run. We're going to take one out. Let me space these around a little bit better. I thought I could get eight. Some of the jars, especially the golden harvest jars, they're fatter, so you may only get seven in there. I'm going to do two runs now, uh, four and three. No, one, two, three, four, five, five and three. Uh, to get my eight. By the time the fiance gets back uh, from where she's gone, she may have other stuff for me to can anyway, so I may get another load. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, the stove is now set on high. We're going to line up our lid, crank it closed. I like to adjust it so that my steam stem is not underneath that vent. That's just too much steam for it to take out. We're going to put it there. We're going to let that come up to temperature before we put our weight on it. Back in a few minutes. Alright, well, the canner is starting to come up to temperature really nicely. You can hear, probably from the sound, that the water is boiling. We've got an intermittent stream of speed steam coming out of the vent here we're just gonna wait until yeah this stream's getting pretty steady actually yeah you let it vent a few minutes until you see that stream get a steady stream coming out get all of the air out of the canner you want it filled with water at the bottom steam at the top so if it's still spitting air every once in a while you wait a bit but we got a pretty steady stream on there. We're just gonna put our weight on. What I usually do is I keep this canner running on max on the stove until my dial gets up to about eight pounds. Then I'll start lowering the temperature slowly until it hits that 10, 11 mark. Keep lowering, keep lowering it. It'll be on almost minimum by the time it gets up to pressure. Uh, and you can just keep an eye on it, but basically, set it and forget it like that my safety lock has already popped up here in the back so we're good to go we know we're pressurized already even though our dial isn't reading everything this dial's uh, dial gauge is only two years old so i know everything's good uh, i didn't go through the whole process of, of making sure the holes are unblocked and everything's working uh, in this video because I've used this canner already this year and I've already gone through that process so there was no real need to do it. And I think our needle is about ready to start moving. Yeah, starting to move up. Our overpressure plug here, we're losing a bit of water from that. Not a big deal. That's a safety feature. If for some reason this gets overpressurized, that little rubber plug will pop right out of the lid and release the pressure so that your pressure canner doesn't explode. Remember, we're not trying to cause any damage here to the Boston Marathon. We're, we're trying to avoid pressure cookers from exploding. And yeah, see the needle starting to come up now. We're getting two, we'll get three soon. It'll go up pretty quickly on max. All right, folks, as you can see, we've hit 10 pounds of pressure. I double-checked my book, and yes, it is 35 minutes for one-liter jars. I'll keep an eye on this for a while, keep lowering my temperature to keep, uh, keep it under uh, 12 pounds, keep it in the 10-11 range, and uh, my gosh, I'm running out of tape already, so uh, yeah, we'll be back uh, after this thing has uh, reached its 35 minutes.